Christian. Is it on already? It's on. Oh, great. Hello. We're rolling. Welcome. We're rolling. It's really nice Welcome. of you to visit me. I promised you a miracle. And the reason it's going to be a miracle is because it's something that you're going to do on yourself. I love it. I love it. I so, love it. This is this is right up my street. I've grabbed a couple of decks from my games corner. It's a bit like the Matrix moment, red right. or blue. Which do you prefer? I'm going to go for the league back. I'll go for the league back. I'm <laughs> so a gonna, sucker for it. <laughs> all right, so we'll park, we'll park that over there for a moment yep. and we'll use these. Okay. And um, effectively, we're going to use them a bit like tickets in a raffle. All right, so of course, I'll just check there's no jokers. Right, as you can see, this yeah, yep. thoroughly shuffled deck. Thoroughly, yep. Yeah, and it, in fact, I'd like you to okay. take the cards face up for me yep. and just cut them in your hand. Okay, we'll just cut them? Yeah, cut them. And what you saw, you had a three, you've got an ace. Yep. Keep cutting. You've got a four, just to show them. Always a cut brings different cards into play. Yep. Yeah? Yep. So turn them face down. Yep. Park them in my hands. And you're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time we're going to park a prediction. So this time when you cut, I want you to leave the cards where you cut at a wonky angle. So go ahead, pick everything up, okay. cut, and leave it at a wonky angle. Okay, So we're going to park a mystery prediction. We're going to come back to that later. Okay. But somewhere in that deck of cards that we haven't used yet is that card you've cut to. Yes. In fact, actually, could you just park that in your pocket? Yes. Yeah. Don't look yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we'll actually move this that way, way so it's clear for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to think of the number between one and fifty-two. Okay. Just in your head. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Now the first number people often think of um, yeah. are the more predictable numbers. Okay. Now be honest with me, you've gone for a number in the 30s or 40s, haven't you? No, I haven't. Have you not? You're no. the unpredictable type. I, I like to think. I was trying it's to be unpredictable. To no, I, 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 I just throwing that out. What have you gone for then? I've gone for 18. So look, <laughs> there's no way I could have known a number between 1 and 52 what number you would have said. No way. Right? Even though I didn't know. Yeah, but somewhere in that deck is the card that you cut to in your pocket. All I want you to do yes. is take the cards out of the box. So open up the box, take everything out, or I want you to deal down, face down, one at a time, and count to the 18th card. So count 17 cards face down here and place the 18th card forward for me. Okay, I'm already nervous. Yeah, here we go. One, one two, two, three, four, four five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And that's the 18th card. That is the 18th. You named any number between 1 and 52. I want you to deal that forward for me. Yep. Now, it goes without saying, I'm stating the obvious here, but had you named any other number, we would have a completely different card. That's true. Okay, same here. You could have named higher numbers, we would have been with these. Correct? Yes. yes. Happy. <laughs> uh, well, I th I, yes. So I think for the first time, I want you to bring out the card that you cut to. And of course, I'll spread these as well. So you could have cut to any card. Turn it face up. What have we got? We've got the Eight of Hearts. The Eight of Hearts. I don't see it here. Do you want to turn it over and show the camera? Oh, go on, go on, go on. It's a mirror. I'm going to sit. Am I going to have a look? Jesus. And there we have it. Well done, Alex. I see? love it. I love it. Oh, <laughs> so improbable, it's impossible. I love it. I've got that giddy <laughs> feeling. I've got that really giddy feeling that um, that I think I just love about having a card found, a lost and found, lost and that found. is just charming. <laughs> um, genius. Thank you. Thank you so much. Genius. A lot of hard work. Yeah. Th this is definitely... Should we, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. We can talk about it. Can yeah, yeah. So you can, might as well tell people what it is. Yeah, so so this is one of my favourite effects because it's one of those effects that relies on so many different variables. And I use the line, it seems Im improbable, which feels impossible. Right, So it's okay. all these different variables somehow matching up to, to give the spectator a moment where they've just done something completely impossible. So what you get in the box is the two decks of cards. Yep. One of the decks is gaffed, so th that's this deck here. Well, I'm going to try and guess it a minute. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try and get because there's, there's, I think people want to know. So I haven't actually watched. You haven't. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't watch the tutorial before coming because I wanted to have. Oh, a, I wanted to have the feeling of of having the magic trick done Good. on it because I, I love it. I can, uh, you know. Um, even if someone does some elastic band magic on me, I yeah, it's always good to see I something. I absolutely love, love the sensation of um, having magic. Um, um, well, so yeah, so, so you get you get a gaff deck and, and you get a regular. What's it deck. called? What's it called? What, you call it? what do you mean? What's the trick called? Oh, Miracle One. It's Miracle One. <laughs> Are you this, stuck? Oh, what's that? This is more more. Are you getting a bit fed up with having to have one? No. At the end? So this this is the last one in my one series. If you're familiar, there's not going to be another one. No, no, there's not, not going to be yet, another, another one. one. No. If it is, it's going to be called another <laughs> one. Um, but no, definitely. Um, with the one series, I, I planned to release three separate tricks that had very different flavour to them. And of course, 
level one was a vanishing deck. Yeah. Switch one was sort of a more mentalism prediction effect where you predict a name card under a glass, but as other applications as well. And this was a card at any number that's presented as an any card at any number. Right. And that's why we have the two decks, because it's the sort of thing you would have in your games corner at home, just two packs of cards you bring into play. And of course, um, having the two decks allows you to do this effect and then continue with the other deck if you wanted to perform some more, if that makes sense. Right, so, so actually, so talking about pocket space-wise yes. here, if you were, you could actually have the deck in play that you've been using normally, more or less? Yeah, yeah, so, so the gimmick deck is the blue deck, and if right. you wanted to just carry that gimmick deck, you would have to force the card from that deck. Yes. And then put the cards back in the box. And so, so you can technically do it with one deck. And we have a Facebook group with this project where I have additional videos, one of which is talking about using it as a single deck as well. Um, but yeah, this is just something I carry as an extra thing. I'm always carrying a couple of decks with me anyway. So one's a regular deck, and we provide, because they're custom printed mandolin back cards, oh, okay. we provide the regular deck with extra cards that you can swap okay. out for the secret, basically. Right. Um, and yeah, this is more of a project, to be honest, because in this I teach basically every of my favorite versions of how to force a card, some of which happens in the spectator's right. hands, them shuffling, cutting, placing the card aside. I teach my thoughts on the cross cut, which is what we did here a little yeah. bit. Um, I call it cross cut considerations, and I talk about the idea of repetition of the cutting again and again. So they remember cutting several times in their hands. And, you know, so there's different ways of, of approaching it. And I also uh, teach one of my favorite forces, which is the Hoffman's a hand up force. So there are several forces that you learn how to bring that secret card into play, and then the gaff deck does the rest of the work for you. Okay, so, so I wasn't, so so yes. when I watched it, I wasn't the least bit bothered about the gaff deck, because you can gaff a deck in so many ways. Yeah, of course. You'd be left gassing, and what you'd be, well, I could guess and go, okay, well you can do that, and that would hide this, and you could have I don't know, multiple that, multiple cards hidden within the deck somehow, or, yes. or whatever whatever it might be. Yeah, don't, so, tell, don't tell me. No, 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 but, but I do want to say what something. what I loved right. about it was the force, because I knew it was a force, Yes, it had to be a force. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, it's a like, force, but that's all, that looks like but it's very off. good force. Yeah, so 80 to 90 percent of the time, you never have to interact and touch the cards. Right. In the instance that just occurred now, I did inter uh, interact with the cards because I needed to okay. do something so, sneaky. Uh, but at the same time, it's very easy, and I teach it in great detail. So effectively, you have the tools to be able to perform this, uh, you know, hands off, and to know what to do if you know that majority of the time doesn't come into play. Um, it's more kind of like a tutorial where I cover all aspects of making the effect look the same. And the important thing about the gaff deck that I would say is I've tried to build it in such a way that all the conditions are fair. So there's no like miss pit uh, right, yeah. cards where you're having to hide one corner. I wanted that revelation to be completely open. And I wanted to be able to show the rest of the deck after the cards sure. have been dealt um, as different cards. Because that closes yeah, yeah. those doors on... on you know, even though there is something sneaky there, the way that I've constructed this is wow. hopefully feels as fair I, as possible. I felt the dealing was irritatingly fair. Yes. That and was, remember, you that took was, the cards out of the box. I did. You see? And this is the interesting thing. A majority of the time, the spectator can remove the cards without right. any interaction. So. And there's never any... If, if The worst case scenario is that I have to take the cards out of the box. But there's nothing and fiddly I about that. I think I know why that might be. You I... might know why, but I will just reiterate, I'm not displacing cards from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. So there's no fiddly kind of tipping out moves. No. So there's and... one secret move that's very simple. And like I say, this is all based on statistics. And I was aiming with this to make a majority of, of, of the times look the most impossible right. it can and feel the most impossible So it can. they can always deal down for their cards. Yes. Yeah. And... The way I, uh, yeah. So that I mean that is a beautiful that is That's a beautiful cool. moment. That's cool because you are there you are there in anticipation going, what is running through my head was what's no he going to do? There's no yeah, way. Yeah, it's got to stop me at some yeah. point. I just and, love the and, feeling and like they deal down to the number and then you you recap the conditions and I, I talk about this in the scripting yep. of the effect, but you reiterate that they cut and they placed the card in their pocket or to the side. You reiterate they could have named any number. You reiterate that they removed the card from the box, in this case, and dealt down themselves, yeah. placed the card forward, and immediately you show all the other cards. Yeah. So I leave the cards face up so that they yeah, register yeah. that, you know, 
previous methods no. aren't necessarily possible in that way. And what I like, so the force, which I've got a vague idea about, having now had it done on me and, and looking at this card. Um, oh, well, no, that's just warping in the sun. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the secret's not here, actually. Oh, is it not? Here. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, maybe somewhere. Um, it is somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say too much, though. Um, that seems like a brilliant utility force. Yes. If you master that for I reckon if you master that force, you 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 you've got your money's worth. Right. From that. Even if you even if you do it on a different trick or every other trick where you have to force a card, because that is a brilliant that should be called miracle force. <laughs> Thank you. That's nice. I'm glad you see the value in it. I think a lot of workers, professionals, friends of mine and you know, even eccentric hobbyists understand the, the right. utility of these separate parts as well. Um, so it's such a pleasure for me to put this in, in a single project and present it in such a way that it feels as fair as that, you know. It is, it's really good, it's really, really good. And what's that, so tutorial wise, yes. you go into depth on, on all of it? Yeah, so, so there's an hour-ish, maybe longer, oh. an hour plus tutorial on all aspects of um, forcing the card, having the number named, uh, and then taking the cards out of the box. And honestly, this is not, this is a beginner trick. In right. other words, conceptually, it's very basic. Um, and you don't need to do any memory work because we provide you with the tools to be able to do it without having to think. Although it, those of you that just spend, you know, half an hour on it will understand conceptually, you know, how to memorize this. So the idea is if you understand how the trick not works, if you understand how the trick actually works, mm -hmm. then for every variable, of which I'm assuming there aren't 52 by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> Yeah, but, but yeah, a couple of variables that might be there. Because you understand how the trick works, it will always be obvious. Always, you because of all the elements I teach and how basic they are, it will always feel as fair as that. Always. And that was my whole sole purpose with this, this effect. You know, method-wise, I did this so that all those conditions were met. Okay. Yeah. And so is, is the teaching, as in, so I know, you, let's, let's talk a little bit about your monthly. Anything you want, yeah. A little well, bit about your monthly, which you, oh there it is, Magic Monthly, <laughs> as if I couldn't remember what it was called. Um, is, is, so, I've, I've watched a few of your Magic Monthlies, and you to me are a little bit like, you're, you're like the English Danny Dortys. Oh, that's nice. So you're like, you're, you're, big you're like, compliment. well you're like, yeah, but you're just not, it's irritating to see this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've so not do you them. touch on all of those, on all of those little, um, I you're quite, you, you, you do details. Yeah, because what, what I have noticed about you, you do touch people, um, both. Both emotionally, obviously, physically. but you do actually physically go, and you've done all of that. Yeah, yeah, I do. Do you find that really important? Do you find that, I don't know if it's important for the method, but... Oh, so goodness, I didn't expect that question. I think um, it's character-based. I mean, as a person, I, I tend to keep my magic similar to how I come across in everyday life, and I am quite a touchy-feely person, you know, hugs and handshakes yeah. and things. So I think it's just important when I perform to be myself, and, and that translates really, hopefully, yeah. well through the magic. Um, but yeah, I think touching is, you know, without being invasive, I think in an appropriate way, it's actually yeah. quite effective because you're building up a linguistic connectivity through the presentation of the script, yeah. but also a physical contact which allows you to, you know, have a moment with that person. So it's quite deep, but I mean, definitely, yeah, I do, I do think it's necessary sometimes to bring them in, to bring the attention, and sometimes yeah. it takes that contact to bring that attention yeah, yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I know, because I kind of felt it. It felt like, you know, you were in something. Yeah, Good. yeah, yeah, Thanks. yeah. No, it's an absolutely beautiful trick. Have, you, you, have so you got much. the next one lined up? Um, so, like I said, this is not, you know, this is the last in the one series, and it's not something in terms of the name that I'm doing. But of course, I'm working on loads of other things. Right. Um, I'm it's working. Not the, on it's, not, it's not the two series. No, it's, it's not, not the two, the two series. series. No, I'm working. Out. I'll be. I'll be totally open. I'm working. I have a product coming out with Illusionist soon, which is a, uh, a mentalism kind of device. I have a couple of things in the works with Card Shark. Vanishing Ink are in discussions with a couple of tricks that I use uh, an app for. So I've built a couple of apps that do different things. And so I'm just going to tap into that place. Mainly what I'm working at the moment are just tools that help with sure. achieving certain effects. A bit like level one, it's sort of yeah. like the gimmick itself is a tool because if you carry it with you, you can make a deck vanish, you know? Yeah. So I, I love these kind of utility gimmicks that don't seem to 
like be seen by the spectator but can serve a really strong purpose for your magic. So I'm working all the time on, on, on these things. And of course, most of my time I'm working on Magic Monthly. So I teach two tricks every month. Um, these are tricks that I've tried and tested over 10 year periods that I've created and tweaked and kind of old principles I've adapted and added my sort of thoughts on. I do care a lot about theory, but not in a dull way. I think theory can be fun <laughs> and it can be practical. I think you can actually, yeah, yeah. you know, put theory into practice. So I'm more of a doer than a sayer. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it shows through the, the membership and and, and why and card? So why card at any number? I just Is think that's something that it's, it's, it's one of my. It's always been one of my favourite effects um, that I've been interested in. Um, it's like a science experiment. I talk about. I use the word variable because it is that. You know, the person goes away thinking, but I cut the cards, I put that card there, I dealt the cards, I named this. There's no way that should yeah, work, yeah. but it does. So it feels, in a, in a weird way, like they do the magic and that the variables, like all the different factors, are just so improbable. Like, how could they have lined up? So for that very reason, I, I think that's why I'm interested in this plot. It's just because they walk away thinking, they have no idea how it works, basically, <laughs> and that just leaves them. It's kind wonder. of, it's kind of true. So I but still don't, true, I right? still don't know about this step. I still don't know what's well, going we on. Well, you can there. turn the camera off, and I'll show you how. You it will works. show me. But also, and what about uh, crediting, inspiration? Yes. Uh, where does that all yeah, come so from? And is that? In yeah, it's every, that's my bugbear. Ab no, ab absolutely. All the crediting is there. Uh, I spend about five minutes talking about inspiration, credits of inspiration, technique. Um, obviously, Mike Mike Rose was big inspiration with Grail. Brilliant trick, product, brilliant trick. Which is a brilliant trick uh, sold yep. at Alakazam Magic, or produced with Alakazam Magic. Um, Adrian Vega um, uses this principle, Hondo uses this principle. Um, this is all independent creation, I've got their blessing and I do, I talk, you know, pay homage to them. Obviously the Burglass effect was popularised by David Burglass yeah. and I talk a bit about him too. And just kind of my journey, I guess, with this <coughs> and how I got to this place, you know, with this effect. Great, yes. great stuff. I'll, I love it. It is on Monster Magic, which I've, as I've just Monster mentioned, Magic does mean monsters. <laughs> it's <little> monsters. <laughs> so any trick that is on Monster Magic is uh, completely endorsed by Monster Magic. So Christian, congratulations for Thank winning you. the chance. I've won the chance. Through. No, I'm really happy to share this. I'm so proud of this, and um, I know the value of it because I, you know, I perform this a lot, and you know, it's just it's it's kind of the, the thing that you. You can give to a beginner and they can do. I so this is kind yeah. of making it as easy as possible for people. And I'm proud of that too, because I think the less you have to think analytically whilst you're performing, the more you can focus on performance and the more that you can enjoy it as a performer. This is how I feel anyway, so no, it's I, a pleasure. I, I, think, I think it is a trick that any beginner can do. But I also think it's interest it's introducing you into into sort of, I don't know, subtleties or um, performance. I think there's something you can really learn from it more than just doing the trick, which sounds like I'm blowing smoke. No, no, no. This is behind, great. I, mean, I think, I think what, I do, what I do find interesting is that force um, is, is is super clean and lovely. And I think any beginner who learns that will have, will have that in their arsenal. So they'll they'll learn a little bit about, I guess, audience management. Um, I talk a bit and about not, psychology. Yeah, well. yeah. But it's not so much winging it, but not, but not necessarily knowing exactly when something is going to be right or happening. So, but, but, but still being, but you still get that confidence, and you still know that it is always going to work. So, absolutely, it's terrific. Thank you so much Thank for having me. This is so nice you visited me, and it's such a nice. It's day such a lovely day. Who would have thought the cars would be <laughs> bowing in the sun? <laughs>